Hi, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of I Live For This Podcast with your host, me, Trinity the Tuck, and our co-host, Chantel Sparkles. Woo-hoo. Hey, Chantel. Good. I, I, I'm excited to see you on the right side of my screen for once. You're always on the left side, and and it's for some reason not centered. But we also have um, one of my inspirations in drag. I've, I've followed this entertainer for years when they were a makeup artist on my favorite show at the time, America's Next Top Model. We have the one, the only, the ultimate Raja Gemini. Hi. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Is this, is this, are we going to be on camera? Well, so, um, the, for the podcast, this will be like a regular pod where they can, uh, listen to this wherever they listen to their podcast, but also, uh, they can go to our Patreon and watch this, uh, video. Um, but it's, it's all casual, you know, feel free to yeah. smoke your blunt like you're doing. I am. I am. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm like, well, I'm going to smoke this blunt, uh, in my palazzo. <laughs> I live. Um, so. it's everything. <laughs> well, before we started the podcast, we were, um, well, you guys were discussing uh, Chantel's. Well, at first, uh, she didn't know. She was like, who is this random bitch in a Sailor Moon sweat? <laughs> 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 this gay bitch. No, but I was like telling her about how um, just super thankful and blessed that you shooted um, on the Tudor Boot thing about Sasha Colby's finale gown. You're like, oh, you did that gown. Yeah, but yeah. So me and my boyfriend no, that, made that. That count. thing was a that thing was a parade float. Yeah, but it was like and then crazy some. to pack. It that was wasn't even wild. all of it. Yep, they still had pieces that she oh, didn't even yeah. wear. So what? a lot of people, yeah. So a lot of people are actually wanting to know the story behind the back piece because we made this mm. giant back piece out of uh, silver lame, I think it's called. And yeah. have you ever played Final Fantasy, the video game? Uh, no, but I know of it. I don't, okay, I don't so know there's... anything about video games. I don't even know what the fuck Sailor Moon is. So oh, okay. I know well, there's this video <laughs> game know. in fi- Final Fantasy VIII called Sorceress Adia, and okay. she had this sickening gold back piece, and so the idea and inspiration was behind that. And so we made it, and then we did, I think, like over 120 yards of lame, just like oh. bunched all over the back piece, and then it was like draped like like a giant train. It was really, oh really God. cool, and a lot of people were wondering, like, well, why didn't she wear the back piece? And it's just because she had that giant um, wing headpiece with the hair. I felt uh-huh. like it would have been uh-huh. too much anyways. It would have got caught in the back piece and not oh, clean. What, so. what, what, what does too much mean? What does that mean? I mean, you yeah, know? realistically. I just felt like maybe <laughs> that, that would have been the reason. I don't know for sure like what actually happened, but I think it was maybe because yeah. that it would have got stuck in the, the headpiece. Or... I think because, you know, when she walked out, that door was kind of small, that uh-huh, walkway. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, the back piece was... It was busting. huge. It was huge. Huge. Yeah, it was well, huge. Well, I, I, always, I always believe, you know, some girls say if you're not wearing nails, you're not doing drag. But if you've never worn a back piece, have you ever done drag? <laughs> Correct. You know, I, I mean, a back piece... Those words like give me the chills. I'm like, yeah, yeah strap something to my fucking back. I'm yeah. into it. It was Literally spectacular, it. spectacular job. But uh, you know what's great is I'm in now that I know you and I know that, that your work and sitting here with Trinity and the the three of us combined. If we were in a room together, and it I brought the blunt, we oh what my would god, we come out? Wait, 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 first stop. Only it would take us like ten minutes. Sense, and then Trinity's <laughs> drag, like just the creativity and then me with the hair and the video games and cosplay techniques. Like we would make some fucking crazy shit. Oh, absolutely. that would be crazy. <laughs> Maybe we should start our own, um, our own, uh, styling drag Maybe. show. It's the next, it's the next level. I mean, you yes. know, I, I, I'm in this like total complete mood right now where I'm tapping into some of the skills and or, uh, talents that I've, really kind of like put to sleep for a long time because I focused so much of it in drag and I've channeled a lot of it through drag, but I'm about to start revisiting some things, you know, I think it's, it's that time in our lives where everybody knows we do this thing, but do they know that we do this other shit, you know? Yeah. So I'm at that place right now. You know, because looking at all of your stuff that you brought for all star seven, girl, you really should become a stylist for some of these girls going, going on the show. Like yeah, you should yeah. start that as a business, like where they can, I, I they, you can, you can consult with Raja and she can, yeah. you know, style you. 
Give yeah, me some if fashion. there's if there's if there's anything that I do well, I mean, I can definitely put myself in drag just fine. Yeah, and I can dress myself and all of that. But I'm ultimately I'm a stylist. I, mm-hmm. I'm an art director. That's that's you know I can't perform like a lot of the girls, but I can definitely create a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it takes yeah, more absolutely. than just performing to be, you know, if you're a strag queen. So you're good at a lot right. of things. And that's what's the most important. I feel like, you know, you're not really a drag queen. You're, you are literally like an artist. art, like art, like that big ass walking art. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. God, this is, this, I love compliments. What is today? Thursday? I love compliments <laughs> on a Thursday. Always. Mm-hmm. Well, we have some segments that we want to get through today. And mm-hmm. um, the first one is about the Michelle that I'm... We're not talking about that at all. Oh, are we not? <laughs> oh, I, I want to. I want to bring it up, but that's not. That's 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 later on. The first okay. one is about um, a report that reveals a Florida GOP power couple possibly has criminal threesome sex tape scheme. So in this article, um, it's talking about. Uh, this lady's this, from Florida too, which is not far from where I used, where I'm from. Yeah, she's. I feel like she, I feel like I feel like this story. There must are there multiples of this story. I feel like there's always like some kind of GOP uh, evangelical couple somewhere in Florida having a three way. Always like, is possibly. That a normal thing? <laughs> but she is. Um, she is on the. Uh, she's the co-founder of Moms for Liberty, which is like the most atrocious. Her, uh, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. Uh, Republican thing ever. Anyway, so apparently, and this is all allegedly as of right now, her husband would go to bars and take video or pictures people. of of women, and they but would not would know. Film, that he wouldn't film them direct. He would film their drinks and act like he's filming like beer bottles or something. It was really fucking weird. What? Yeah, and they'd have no idea that, and they'd have no idea that they're being filmed or photographed. And he would send this footage to his wife, so she could pick who, and she would say, they... "Don't come home unless your dick's wet, sweetie." <laughs> what? Yeah, this is real. Yeah, I love exactly. this. This is real. And she's, a, I think she's a teacher too, right? Yeah. Well, but what's crazy is like they sh- they did all of this like without the consent of the women. So I am all for like, girl, go go do your thing of, yeah. of threesomes and all that stuff if that's your thing. But like mm-hmm. consent is, is is for sure like I must. And yeah. um, if these women didn't know, like how are how are y'all going to be so anti? Um, they also queer, went as far as to filming the sex. Uh, without them knowing. Oh. Yeah, well, they say oh, that they okay. don't know for so sure he, whether or not some of so, the girls did know. Okay, so wait. So he was filming their drinks, and then eventually he would lure them in and have sex with them. Yeah, they would yeah. eventually pick somebody, and then they would go home. They would have their threesome and stuff, and then they would film that, too, I think. And but, but without, these are the same people... Consent. Yeah, and th- these are the same people that are trying to pass laws against queer people, yep. ag- against women, um, uh, all in the name of uh religion and conservative conservatism um it that's very crazy to me i hope that they we campaign, campaign campaign against lgbtq plus rights yeah and accuse transgender we... people of being groomers and here they are i just here you know are. here's what I, I mean this story is so common like i said i was like this could have been any moment of a three-way in florida by some some conservative you know yeah. and the, the common thing that is like that keeps coming up over and over again in these situations is the hypocrisy in it and that's Here what's so appalling about about it because you know these are people who preach a certain thing and then uh, surprise surprise I heard that song on Instagram. surprise surprise yes it's very oh really oh really they're in a, they're caught in a sex scandal oh really they're a pedophile oh my god you know like it's not it's yep. no it's not even a surprise because it just kind of is a given that there's going to be some sort of hypocrisy behind it like yeah. that guy that the kicker from the football team uh, by the way gorgeous guy <laughs> oh yeah he's gorgeous oh, i saw that yeah. yeah where he's like talking about you know he's talking about these misogynistic you know Women horribly need to be in the anti- house. right and then and then it's coming up that there's this, these slight gay scandals about him fucking around with some sort of baton twirling gay that he went to college with. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. But, you know, if these stories do come out, who, that guy looked gay as fuck anyway. Oh, girl, I, completely. Yes. 
Yeah, he looks like a like a few people that I spent, you know, at least five ninety nine to ten dollars on OnlyFans a month. You know, or at least one <laughs> or at least one month. One month. I love the realism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just subscribe for one month. You look at all their content and then unsubscribe. So and you, you realize know, oh, girl, I, I've done that. I've, I've done that where you like you're curious and so you pay see. for it. You pay yeah. for it, but but then I immediately I mean so I don't forget and I don't want to get yeah. charged again. I immediately um, unsubscribe so that way I still get the month that I paid for, but I Amen. won't be charged the next. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you just you just you know you just work uh, smarter, not harder. Or something. Correct. Well, ho hopefully you're harder. But anyway, so speaking <laughs> of harder, this is a total side note. But like recently, just for kicks, just for fun, just because I'm bored, you know, when when I'm in the in the throes of self pleasure, um, I, I sometimes I'd be thinking about some GOPs, some Republicans. Really? Just, just to be nasty, just to think nasty thoughts about them, like in like in the most... like you like you destroying them uh, in the bedroom. Oh, whatever. Whatever. I just, <laughs> I just love it. I think it's just so hate sex. Yeah. Hate it's sex. Forbi it's forbidden. You know, slap like, them. Punch them. Call me, yeah. call me an F word. Call me an F yeah. word. Get in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, daddy. I am queer as fuck. Take yeah, away that. my rights. Take away my rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually, I actually kind of um, adopted that idea through Kara Cunningham. Because she's, she's hilarious, and she lives in Tennessee, and she talks about how she goes, you know, and she's trans, and she's like, she's she's like, I love fucking a Republican. Like, that's my <laughs> ultimate, like, and I'm like, wow, that is a, that's an interesting fantasy. Let me try that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Why not? That yeah. that's that's crazy. I you know, growing up in Alabama, I'm sure I I fucked many uh, Republicans. Oh, but um, sure, yeah. I just didn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next topic is something, uh, Raja, you're very familiar with, and, and this is the part where we can talk about uh, the Michelle Visage thing. Um, I don't know if you've seen, uh, Evie Oddly has been spilling the tea, tea. Of, tea of her experience on, on Drag Race All-Star 7 on a oh. lot of podcasts recently. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, I, have, kinda saw, I, I got a little sprinkling of it because I follow her. So, I, I girl, she is going in depth, honey. What, mm. How do you feel about that? I mean, I know we all like just to put rumors away. Yes, we all filmed a reunion with sibling rivalry. No, it did not get released. No, it probably will never get released. Um, well, as she said, until Bob gets, I think, what, murdered or arrested? Um, <laughs> until she where, dies where, and someone, where, someone where has access a, to it. Yeah, to the Where computer. it gets leaked. <laughs> but um, but what do you think about that? Like her her <laughs> being public about it all. Um, I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the way I mean, she said here's it too was was okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's okay. Like whatever, it it, it was an experience, and people mm -hmm. are interested in how that how what what things do occur behind the scenes because it is very much there's a, a veneer a lacquered veiled version of what what actually yeah. happens behind the scenes a lot of times we're exhausted a lot of times we're frustrated we're divas whatever but there were definitely conversations that we had amongst ourselves that i think would be an interesting um insight um now i remember specifically like how vocal everyone was when i got there yeah because a lot of you had done this was like your second and third time doing this you yeah. know, and you knew your way around it more than I did because the last time I was on it was 11 years previous. So it was like, I was just kind of like sitting back and I'm like, wow, these girls are really saying what they're feeling. And I'm just going to sit back and watch. Like, yeah, I, you know, like I was just, I was like, it was a proud moment for me. I was like, yes, look at them sticking up for themselves. And when things became a little uncomfortable for us, we were very vocal about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we had every right to be vocal about it, you know, because it was off camera. It, we were very responsible ab about that. And we, we bent it, we bent it to get the energy out. And, um, you know, and the time that I, the times, the few times, I think, I think, as I remember it, the few times that I ever did speak up was because I had held it in for quite a bit. And I was like, I can't. Yeah. You know, I, I think I, we I all, I think we all like definitely had, um, we, we all said our, our grievances out loud with each other to production. Um, 
you know, and, and a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that we are all divas yeah, and yeah. we, we all wanted, we all wanted special treatment and, 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 um, we all felt like we deserved X, Y, and Z, but I do think there were some legitimate no, we, concerns. We deserved, we deserved W, X, Y, and Z. You know what I yeah. mean? Like yeah. I, I really, I never, at, at, at any point did I ever disagree with the concept of, you know what, we won this one. You, as the group, the production, RuPaul, the, the umbrella, assigned those titles to us. So yeah. please treat us accordingly. Well, we don't what, need, are, what are some we don't things need, that they we don't, I, don't need any, I don't need anyone to fucking rim my hole every day, but you're, <laughs> you best believe that you're going to listen to me when I tell you something. Because yeah. I'm not new. Um, you know, and I've been a contributor to, to elevating the brand in whatever way that I could, you know, whether it be through fashion photo review or any times that I've made myself available to them mm -hmm. eagerly, happily, you know. So by, but while I'm here, while I'm in this process, please treat me as such. What Don't, would be some things new. that you think they or they would have done that caused you guys to feel a certain way? Um, I, I think at the, at initially at the beginning, there was a lot of moments where they were like, they were, they, we were playing the game in the old way where they were giving us extra criticisms that we felt were unnecessary. We're like, mm -hmm. wait, 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 especially in Evie's case, because Evie is the oddball and she, yeah. she doesn't, she, her focus isn't on being this, on, on, uh, on showcasing a pristine form of drag. Hers yeah. is messy hers and they crowned her for it. So when they started picking on her in, in certain moments, uh, it became frustrating, understandably yeah. so. You yeah. know? And so she vocalized it quite a bit. So moments like that. You know? yeah. And I don't, yeah. think, I don't think me mentioning or anyone of, of us talking about this would be a surprise to the audience of Drag Race because please be realistic. This is still a reality TV show. We yeah, it's are like The Wizard actually, of Oz. Yeah, we're, we're actually people. We're, we're, when we're on that set, we're cast members. So there are grievances that will be, that will be expressed. And we are very dramatic at it. And so, you know, and it was fun. You know, my favorite moment was when Trinity, did anybody ever talk about this? Well, Trinity, what? remember, remember when you lost the, the thing and you made like oh, production I people. I don't think I don't think I have said it. I don't think publicly. Oh, I, either. We we talked about. Oh my gosh! I actually um um uh had talked to Mandy about this recently. Um, oh really? Oh how is she? Oh, uh, oh yeah, she's she's Mandy. great. Yeah, she's you great. See what I mean? So, you see what I mean? We we love the the producers. We we were definitely. Uh, I never felt like I was uh, manipulated by it. Well, um, I don't know. There is some level of manipulation, but you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. I, I, there's, I still find all of those people, all the producers and directors, I still have very endearing stories about all of them, you know? Oh, I yeah, don't, I, I, I don't think, I think something that we, that gets muddled is that I want to make it clear. I love World of Wonder. I love the show. I love all of that. That we And, and very grateful for those experiences uh, because that has elevated me to uh, a whole nother um, realm of, of celebrity, uh, and being able to do the things that I want to do. But even with that being said, that doesn't mean you're not going to have disagreements and you're not going to have grievances. Cause even if you are family members or best friends with somebody, there's going to be times you don't agree. There's going to be times that you feel like they're not doing something right and you need to call it out. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, um, that's a two way street. And, um, you know, sometimes w we felt that way filming this, um, yeah. I, to, to talk about that story really quick. So on, <laughs> it's the all, best, it's the best story I on hear. all star seven. I brought, you know, I knew this was my third time going into the show. I knew that some of the things that they give you for sewing challenges and such are just not the highest quality. And yeah, so, uh -huh. I brought some basic fabrics. I brought my own hot glue gun because they only had the little Which tiny I baby you ones. Which I remember you telling me that. You were like, girl, yeah. if you get on, bring yeah. all your own like sewing yeah. shit. <laughs> yes, I brought feathers. I brought trims. I brought appliques. I brought rhinestones. And I had it all in this bag. Um, and it was like hundreds of dollars worth of, of supplies. Yeah. And we were, we worked hard. All of us worked very hard. Uh, I feel like the, out of the three seasons that I have done, All Star Seven, I worked 
hardest. And I think that everybody around me worked harder than I've seen in the past. You could see um, it. Because we really wanted to make this a great show. And it was a difficult challenge. It was challenging. Yeah. And so um, one of the ch- – I think it was the second sewing challenge. Um, Jinx had asked me – or she had mentioned, oh, this would be great if I had some black feathers. And luckily for me, I brought some black feathers, some black she's ostrich it, feathers. And she's looking up, <laughs> oh, I wish I had some black feathers. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, girl, I'll give you some. I have some. And so I go to my station because I had, like, left them there in the workroom. And I'm looking through, and I'm looking through, and I'm, I can't find them. So I'm like, looking around. I'm like, I can't find these, these feathers. Yeah. And so the longer I'm looking, the more I'm like, oh, my my gosh, I think production or maybe creative have like somehow possibly on accident <laughs> threw, threw them away or um, misplaced them or something. And so as I'm, I'm getting more frantic because this was like I needed the stuff that was in there for future stuff. So then I'm like really frantic and I'm like, I need production to find this stuff now because if you don't, uh, you're going <laughs> to owe me hundreds of dollars worth of supplies. Damn. And I'm like, go, I'm going like frantic because I'm like, this is important. It's my stuff and I need it. And um, I can see you saying that because I've seen that. And girl, you. <laughs> so pro- production, they get, they get Mandy, which is one of the, the uh, executive producers in there. She's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. We're going to find this. We're going to figure it out. I, I, I didn't ask them to do this, but Mandy was in the dumpster. She had physically got herself into the dumpsters outside <laughs> because we thought production had, thrown it away somehow on accident. We didn't, we didn't think it was on purpose. Girl, she's digging through the trash. Girl, they had sent someone, one of the PAs to my room and girl, I had taken that bag of stuff (laughs) to the hotel room and didn't realize it. Cause girl, I was exhausted. I could could not remember. So it was in, it was in my, it was in the hotel room. They had brought it back. So luckily it was that you had it in there or did you just lie and say, Oh, I don't know where it was. No, I didn't. I didn't know it was in there. I yeah. didn't know it was in there. So the the PAs brought it and they said it was in my room. And so then I profusely apologized, obviously, because it yeah. was my fault. But I, I was a diva. I mean, I wanted my stuff because... But my, my, my point in bringing it up is not, you know, it's really to just say that they were very much accommodating once we said you know uh, we're creatives like this is yeah. this is a process here so those things were important well your especially tools, if they want a your... good show they have to Absolutely. make sure that you're provided with the things that you need yeah oh girl so they... and there was like times where they didn't tell us and i think it's because maybe they were changing things on the fly like the the for instance um, needing to change for the lip syncs we didn't know to bring all these extra costumes for oh, yeah to change the lip sync. So they let the girls that were in LA l- actually leave to go Me, yeah. get you Monet, go get um, extra fierce. costumes. And then they let the rest of us ship in more costumes. Um, th- so we had stuff because we didn't have lip sync stuff. So they were very accommodating for those things. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was a high pressure situation. We all, we're winners. We all wanted to win. We, none of us wanted to um, tarnish our reputations, even though nobody was going home. Um, and so it creates this high pressure situation. Also, for something that gets brought up a lot, because I had mentioned it at a brunch show and the video went viral of uh, my impression of Raja uh, reading Michelle on the runway. Um, <laughs> I didn't get to see that. So, um, it, there was this one time on, on the runway, it was towards the beginning well, of the, her read Raja, but I didn't get to see your video in person. Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, they cut a lot of it out because they wanted to make a, us look like winners. Cause at the beginning yeah. of the season, they did not, they, they, they were reading us. Well, that's what like, Evie was saying. Yeah. Like normal yeah. seasons. And then later on, they just stopped giving us negative critique. But up until that point, they were like, saying you know you don't know your brand to evie and and to yeah, they were saying to, a lot of stuff to evie that was like she said sticks with her to this day yeah and then we're saying and then you know michelle you know how michelle is she's very opinionated and gave some like harsh critiques to raja and raja was just like 
who are you to judge me? Like I, when you did that, bitch, I lived. I looked at my boyfriend and I said, "That's how you motherfucking do it as a winner." I just, I just remember being. I remember all of us laughing because it was funny. I was like not taking anything she was saying seriously. I was like, I know because I didn't know the lyrics to the the song that I wrote in that group challenge we did. I think that's what oh, it was, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. And we were all dressed up there like dress, dressed like Dolly Parton. I remember that, which I don't know how the fuck that related to the challenge, but there we were dressed up as Dolly Parton. <laughs> and she starts talking about like the me my me not knowing the lyrics to my own song that I wrote. First of all, I we, we wrote that in a day. Like I was going to say, you probably anything. wrote it in like five minutes and was like, okay. Not even in a runway. day. Like, like, yeah, like a few minutes. And then we have to learn it, do choreography, make a costume, um, you know, jump out of an yeah. airplane with a parachute, uh, <laughs> run to the destination, do choreography, and then know the words. Yeah. And then, you know, and then it was like a laundry list of criticisms. Like, And then your dancing was funny. And then your lip sync was funny. And I just I just started laughing. I was like, ah, isn't that hilarious? I that's, I think, how it started. And she was yeah. like, no, it's not hilarious. You're competing. I was like, I know, but nobody's going home, Michelle. So let's just calm down. And Rue started, <laughs> Rue starts bu- busting out laughing. The director, that, what's that, that Swedish lady, that the one that always had the heels Oh, on day, oh, you know, I don't know, but she was very severe, she was girl. Pissing her, she was pissing her pants. Like, everyone was just, the whole set was laughing. Because I was, I could not. I was just like b- throwing it back at her, like, yeah. ah, like, all right, calm down. Look at my nails are red. I said to her, "Look at right. I put red nails on. Aren't you impressed?" Like shit, like that. I just kept like steering it away, and everyone it just got funnier and funnier, and like kind of like awkward, you know. Oh yeah, so- I remember after that episode because it was such a heated episode because um, Jada got really harsh critiques. Um, Evie got really harsh critiques. I think. Um, somebody else got really harsh critiques and then you got your critiques from, uh, Michelle. We were all just like, really just like mad. Uh, This was not on camera. This was backstage. I remember Roger saying she should be fired. I, I, I I, I think we were all just like, we were all just hyping, hyping each other up in this, this, it was just this, this storm. I mean, girl, we, we were divas and also, you know. There was we a were moment like, we were just we were just hopped up on sugar free Red Bulls. Like, oh, girl, you know, completely. Oh God. <laughs> but again, all of this to say, you know, we still love production. I still love Mandy. I love World of Wonder. I, I know yeah. most of you guys do, too. It's, it was nothing like that. You know, we're in a high stakes pressure yeah. situation. So and I, think also, like, I, I, the- I still text Miss, I still text Michelle once in a while. Like when I see her looking beautiful on an Instagram post, I'll be like, bitch. And she'll but respond, see, that's the, we're that's friends, the thing, though. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, that's the thing. You guys have a different relationship. So you're allowed to read each other, and it'd be fine the next day. That's yeah. what I was figuring. I was like, I was just kind of bouncing it back to her like a colleague. You know, like, yeah. she wasn't she wasn't a superior to me, and I'm not a superior to her. Maybe right. in some areas, you know, maybe in some <laughs> areas. But, uh, but no, I was just kind of like bouncing it back. I don't know. Overall, I mean, it's been, what, two years since it aired? So yeah. it's like now looking back at it and as summer is approaching, I'm like, remember that fucking summer? We were just out of the pandemic. Oh, we girl. To, yeah. And there was so there was so much so much weed being smoked on set, like uh, outside, for of course. Sure. There was, so, that was... I'm so thankful for that. Like, I mean, like, th- thank, thankful for Evie for yeah. really speaking up about that and making that just a part of a part of our day there. We were like having our egg McMuffin sandwiches, smoking blunts and passing it around. You know? I like, live. And, 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 it was and wonderful. Hotel, it was not season three. Season three did not look like that. No. Our hotel was hilarious too because there was a bar that we had to pass by to go outside to the pool area to outside to get air. <laughs> and and we would all order drinks and like the PAs would be like, oh, you can't do that. And we would be like, oh, well, hey, what are you going to do? Tell on us. And we would like get shots we'd get drinks we because we we had to relax Uh, it was such a high stakes pressure situation it was but it was so fun i remember you getting bottles of sauvignon blanc from the the morning in the morning morning to the hotel yes bitch it was fierce um i was just i was just thinking this morning i knew that i was going to talk to you today so i was like just kind of thinking back on the whole experience and i just remember being on that like outside patio and being in the, the COVID bubble, because we weren't allowed to yeah. really kind of be touching or being around the public. 
So I just remember sitting there with like the Vivian specifically and, and probably Evie and looking at the roller coasters across the street. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Can we go yeah. to the magic? Can we go to Majestic Six Flags and go on the coasters? <laughs> and they had to ask production for permission. And then they eventually denied us. And we're like, we hate it here. We want to go on coasters. <laughs> You're like, taking it in the theme park now. <laughs> yeah, I remember they, um, they rented out uh, the office spaces for us to like work on stuff in the hotel and also to do like movie nights. We watched mommy dearest one of the nights uh, they did massages and the, Oh my gosh, the massage therapist. He was so hot, so professional, um, yeah. too, pro too professional. But um, uh, the, I wonder, the, I wonder if they do that now though. Do they, do you think they do that for everyone now or was it just cause I think so. I think, I, I think that they probably realized the girls need, especially all stars. They need, yeah. uh, uh, creature comforts more yeah um, yeah you know you gotta appease your talent especially the ones that are making good tv for you yeah um, i so. agree um what do you think about this season of all-star so far i um i like it i uh i haven't oh wait I, there's only two episodes yes i've yeah. seen it yeah no i like it i like it i i will always be biased about it because of my season seven experience. And I'll always think that we are going to be the most interesting of any of the all-stars of all time of any country, because I was there and I have such an affinity and, and, and love for that experience and you guys. So I'm always going to be like, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. But, but all stars yeah. is my favorite. So like I'm, I'm enjoying it and I'm, some of the girls I have never really spent much time with, like Plastic Tiara, completely fascinated and in love with her. Um, you know, I, I and I don't know them in that closeness or friendship. So it's right, like really interesting to just kind of see them more on TV. I'm enjoying it. I'm gag. I'm gagging, gagging on Plastic. Like oh, me too. She's my girl. Got Mick like, too. Her makeup and is, got Mick. Her got fashion. Mick. Absolutely. Everything. They're yeah. gonna literally ruin. Uh, the expectation of drag for a drag race now because they're, oh, they're right. It's right. it's such high caliber. Like girl, uh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. You but were saying too I, th that I, she... I think about I think about that a lot too. I'm like, gosh, what is what it what what is what is the next level? How did how do you keep right. upping this? You know, the budget. Like people were screaming about whatever I said about how much I paid on a costume or two costumes, whatever it was. But like now it's, it's got to cost even more. Oh, like period. what do these packages cost? Like tens of thousands of dollars to be on all stars. Is that what the expectation? Like, can do we go back like to like trash bags? you feel like they also charge you guys more because of you being, or saying you're like, oh, I'm leaving or whatever. And they're like, oh, we know let's charge them more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. No, I don't know. Because a lot of a lot of the designers you have friendships with, and and they do they do a lot of favors. But like for instance, that that rhinestone costume that got Mick had, with that had the um, the painted the scream, but the whole thing head to toe, not like completely encrusted in this mosaic of rhinestones Fierce. and various like I mean, come on, every yeah. like my God, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, so the and, and I, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say any, I'm not going to give any secrets away, but Raven and I have already done all the fashion photo reviews for the season, so I've seen it till to the end. And it's if you think it's unbelievable on episode two, it gets for fucking great. So well, um, that that, you, that part is nice. You know, would like, you ever do another All Stars? Absolutely not. No, no. no. Why? It, it just, because the universe just really kind of gave it gave that All Stars to me at the perfect time. I had already like accumulated a bunch of stuff that I made through COVID. And I was like, I need to wear these things somewhere. And then the teacher <laughs> yeah. were like, you want to come on Drag Race? I was like, okay, I have this, that, that entrance look I, I made, you know, uh, while in quarantine. So, yeah. you know, just, I was like, okay, yeah. And, and, you know, two, three years ago, I could, I could walk in a high heel differently than I can three years down the line. Like I yeah. was able to stand in heels long enough. But if you ask me now, I'm, I, by the way, I'm turning 50 in a few weeks. So, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Happy birthday. 30, thank you. 32 years of, of teetering in heels. Some of them that That's never, insane. Even, never fit my foot to begin with damaged my feet. And I'm like, and I, and I'm, and I'm, you know, at this place now where I'm rethinking about what my drag looks like with a flat, but Hey, oh my gosh. you know, <laughs> it's like, 
you know, I, you know, I just went off on a tangent, but um, I'm stoned. Um, what were we talking about? Would you ever? Um, oh, going back it? on it? Yeah, no, no, no. And it's just too much. It's too much. It's too much money. Too much pressure. Yeah. I do appreciate the what I love about uh, now after the fact is that it's it's kept me working. Like people are like, yes, All Star Seven, and they're like, Raja, yes. So it's it's kept me in people's eyes and 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 ears and and. You know, people are still talking about me. And now with Nymphia being the second, you know, AAPI winner, again, bringing, bringing me back into the conversation. So I'm really appreciative of that because, you know, not many girls get to do the drag race gigs for 14 years. Yeah. You know, so show true. me another girl. Show me another one, you know. Um, yeah. Manila, you know. Uh, but I'm just saying there's very few of us who, who have had that opportunity and, and there's something to be said about that, you know? Yeah. It's like, what about judging? Yeah. Would you ever consider judging? I would love to. I'm just like, when are they going to ask me? Like, when do, like, I always see all these girls come in, like, when their girls are, like, doing the, chal the uh, creative challenges, like, Raven will walk in and, and consult them. I'm like, hi, an expert, actual expert. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Multiple decades of experience. Why don't you ask me to come on and, and talk about something? But, you know, whatever. It's... Maybe maybe they did and I wasn't available. Who fucking knows? Like, but I would love to. I would love to judge. It would be so fun. Yeah. So I saw in uh, somewhere that in February you conquered your fear of snakes. I did. How you was like that? Snakes? How did you do that? I, they don't. They don't. They don't. As long as they're not poisonous, I I would handle a snake. I don't mind snakes. Yeah, I, I, well, I also kind of like my child, my childhood was in Indonesia. So snakes were very Ooh. scary. You know, yeah. there were like pythons Crazy and, and poisonous. poisonous. Yeah. Tropical, Oof. tropical snakes. Like, you know, and um, so I, snakes was not a thing that was, was not a pet concept for me. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so I've just always had a fear of it. My sisters are the same way, like, because we all kind of grew up with that. But yeah, I was out of really, I was actually in Indonesia. Like I was in Bali and I was at a gathering. A few friends decided to throw me a dinner on the night before I was go coming back home. So we had a little wine soiree in the middle of this. My friends have this beautiful like bunker style brutalist witch house in the middle of Ooh, a, of a, of so a cool. in the in the center of this rice field area and they own a, a fantastic jewelry company. So it, the whole night was just giving me comfortable vibes. Yeah. There was there was a basket of kittens because one of their cats just had a baby. So all of us were holding kitties, Aww. drinking wine with candles. And all of a sudden, this little white snake came out. And they're like, you want to hold it? They just plopped it in my hand. And I was like, well, I wasn't going to throw an animal across the room. So I was like, okay, well, it's a, a metaphor to life. I was like, well, somebody if somebody hands you a snake, then you figure it out, right? It's like, <laughs> okay, here I am. I'm dealing with it. And fortunately, this snake was so docile and so sweet and so cute and the, the the sensation of the the skin the the smoothness of the scales and her color it was she was kind of like an opaly white like aurora mm. borealis and the cat yeah like, it was just gorgeous and i had friends around me so i was just like okay i guess i'm holding snake right now hmm. you know whatever uh, so Chantel, what like what is one of your biggest fears i would say probably claustrophobia especially because mm. like a couple years ago i just got my scuba diving license and we went through one of these little i went you have to have a specific license to go like fully in a cave underwater but you can go like under like areas that are closed in as long as you can see the exit to the next part you know what i mean so like oh, we went yeah. under this area and I just discovered, I was like, I don't like tight spaces like this, especially even if I can see the exit. So claustrophobia is probably one of my biggest. I don't like it. Ooh, bitch. I, 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 see, I, I like diving. There's no way in hell you'd have me uh, cave diving. No. Well, I we would went not... through the hole and I hit my head on one of the reefs. Because like, you mm -hmm. know, when you're underwater, you, your perception of how close and far things are. Um, I went under and I hit my head on the coral and then I look up and I'm like in this clean closed area. It just scared me. It freaked me out. And then my eyes are sensitive. Like if I get things in my eyes that I haven't kind of acclimated to, it makes them like cloudy. So at that point, like my eyes were already cloudy and then I couldn't ah, really, no. it was, and I promise no. diving is not like scary, but like that moment, 
I realized real quick I don't like tight spaces mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, no, 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 thank you. I don't ever want to drown. Uh, the the other thing that made me that made me think of why the snake was fine for me was because it was the least scary of all of my phobias. The other one that I my ma- most major one is heights. Remember when we me were too. on top of the Empire State Building and there was I like, don't know oh, how you no. would do it. Yeah. Oh my god. The Vivian Did you see and those videos crawling. where they're p- lifting the girls up? I, the oh. new cast and they're putting yeah. them on that thing. Absolutely but not. On All Stars no. Seven, the 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 what she's talking about, they actually went on the outside, like top tier part that you can't normally get to. Um, of yeah. the Empire State Building, they I, I was the only one that did not do it. I, that is my it's, fear. Absolutely. Is yeah, there was, I, I, there was, I, there was no not. net. There was nothing to catch us if you fall. Uh-uh. It was literally like if you put your arm over the ledge beneath you is the streets nothing. of New York City. Yeah, yeah. nothing. Oh, you're, no, ma'am. you're probably going to bounce off the side of the building, but eventually you'll. Yeah, it Just was. It was, it was <laughs> frightening. Not. I almost shit myself. It was so too much. And the wind, you're all well, the way especially up at the with top. Nina. Ah. Like there's a video with Nina and she's got that big hair, that big costume, and the wind's just blowing. I'm like, she's gonna be the first uh, one to go, uh, bitch. <laughs> no, ma'am, absolutely not. That is okay with me. Um, our next segment of the podcast is Back in the Day Gay. And this is where we wanna know when did you realize that you were queer? Like, uh, do you have like a specific memory, a crush? Um, how old were you? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I think I've always known it. Okay. Did you? I think I did. I don't know how it is for you, I but always I had always something knew there was... in me that was telling me. Yeah. And people were telling me already at a young age. They were like, "Oh, they were treating me differently." Yes. Than other kids. They were like, "Oh, you, the little, the little prissy one, or whatever." They'd always have like. Why you know, you hold I, you hold your hand like that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was I was being already criticized at, you know, I can remember as far back as being like three years old, you know, um, and always being criticized about it and kind yeah. of like at a, even at my youngest, youngest age, people, you know, everyone around me was telling me not to be to behave a different way constantly. So uh-huh. so I always knew it. I was like, oh, it must be that weird thing about me that. Mm. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's there and people are talking about it. And yeah, so that's, I think I've always known. That was pretty much me too. Like I remember an art class, art class was always like my favorite. Cause it was like, it mm-hmm. always felt safe. You know, that's where I could yeah. kind of draw and express myself. But I remember having this girl come up to me. She, she was sitting completely across the art room, but for some reason she walked up behind me and she whispers in my ear and she goes, Sean, are you gay? And I looked at her and I was like, no. And then she just like went completely across the art room and sat down and I'm sitting here drawing and I'm just thinking to myself, how do you even know what this is? You know what I mean? Because I don't even remember if I knew what gay was. I just knew that I liked, I thought boys were cute, you know? It's just crazy. It's crazy how people kind of do those things, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It sticks with you. Yeah, I mean, I, on a, on a, on a, for me, on a, I mean, on a darker side, I'm sorry, on a darker side, I think I, for some reason I was targeted too mm, at a young age mm. uh, because I was obviously queer. So I became a victim to a lot of like predators, you know, it kind of mm. happened quite a bit. And and I'm free to talk about it now, now that I'm 50 and I dealt, w- I dealt with this stuff a long time ago, but I think it's a very common thing that happens, you know, and it should be spoken about because a lot Absolutely. of people are traumatized. A lot of us have, are, have been traumatized and, and introduced to those concepts far earlier than we needed to. You know? And then people yeah. think like we probably enjoy it or like we're looking for it because we're gay and it's like we didn't ask for this. Right. And and I mean that this this is a, a deeper conversation that could go on forever really, but I think yeah, that that's really another key sign for me was that I was targeted on multiple levels. Either I was being criticized or I became or I became a victim to something, you know. Mm. Well, I feel so, for you because when I was a kid, I was targeted by my godfather, which was my mom's closest best friend growing mm-hmm. up. And he sexually assaulted me all the way through my teenage years, yeah. you know? So, and it, it's, it really messes with you. So yeah, I feel, yeah. Mm. but there's, there's, you know, there's, uh, aside from that, I definitely al- already knew that there was something very strange or, or something about me, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, 
I, uh, you You're know, definitely I, special. As as a kid, um, I think I was very lucky that I had very overprotective grandparents um, mm. with with that kind of sort of thing. Um, I remember when I was sixteen, I had to take care of my grandmother because she was she was terminal, and um, I remember having a conversation with her where she said, "You know, I and she's had cancer on and off since I was born, um, mm. all the way till she died when I was eighteen, when I first turned eighteen. And I remember her telling me, you know, uh, has anybody touched you? Has anybody ever touched you? And mm -hmm. luck luckily for me, I never had that experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember her telling me right before she passed, she said, I just wanted to live long enough to make sure that you grew up where you could defend yourself and tell others if something happened to you. And then she died when I was 18. So it was like wow. her, her, her life mission like she lived up to that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's too often a, an occurrence for, for queer people. And then we're often villainized for speaking out about something like that. So thank you both for sharing those stories. I'm, I, I hate that we're ending this podcast on such a, 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 a serious tone, but um, we had, we had one more, we had one more, uh, uh, I have, I have a, by the way, you know, I have a tendency to go to those places sometimes when we're just chit chatting, I'll be like, tell me about your childhood trauma. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I thank you both for sharing so much, uh, of yourselves today on today's podcast. It, it, it's, I'm sure it will definitely reach, uh, the right people who needed to hear this. So, um, Raja, always a pleasure talking with you. Um, I love, I love you so you. much. I hope to get to see you. I'm going to be at, uh, in LA at the end of the month. So I would love to like grab lunch and go have a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, okay. Lunch, <laughs> I need to try this glass. Be, lunch will be your choice. You tell me where you want to go. Okay. Also, I'll take you. Congratulations on your music video too. I haven't, I like, I haven't like fully got to watch it, but I've been definitely getting all of the highlights from your posts. And I'm like, bitch, what? Trinity. Yes, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yes. The quality is fierce. You're definitely. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I thank know. You. It was like it was like a full film production. You are so rad. I thank you. I appreciate it. it. I thank you. Well, that's been our podcast today on I Live for the this uh, podcast with Trinity the Tuck and Chantal Sparkles. Thank you so much, Raja. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.